A total solar eclipse is happening next Monday afternoon. That's our topic tonight. If you have a question, go ahead and give us a call. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. I just heard that microphone. Dr. Henderson's here. We want you to be able to hear. Let me help you out there. It can get a little okay. tricky. Um, there we go. All right. We're back in business. That's how live TV works, folks. <laughs> we have calls on the line. We're going to get to those in just a second. But you brought in another great animation that shows that shadow maybe in a different way than what we've been showing on the news a lot. So right. explain what's happening here. So this is a NASA animation that kind of gives you a better feeling for what is causing the, the, uh, the eclipse shadow, how small it is, and um, the um, area of the Earth that it, that it crosses over. So as it zooms in here, we'll see that the eclipse started in the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. And then it hits Oregon. Now it's about to go across Tennessee. Don't run outside, it's not happening live. <laughs> and then it's gonna go into the Atlantic and South Carolina. And so we can see not only is that shadow small, it's also fast. It's yeah. traveling at about 1,500 miles per hour. Wow. And it spends, you know, our planet's two thirds to three quarters water. It spends a lot of its time over water. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, when there are total solar eclipses, you have to be over water to see them. But not next Monday. Not on Monday, but a special day. Yeah, and you said 1% of the, of the Earth's surface, right? Way less, yeah. It's probably about a fifth of a percent gets covered at any given, for any given uh, eclipse. That's amazing. Tiny We're amounts. so lucky next Monday, and that's why this is really <laughs> a big deal, and you should try to take part and be in the right location for that right time, if you can, if you can get off work or get off, you know, school, or, you know, a lot of schools are heading outside mm -hmm. and making an educational opportunity, which they should. Let's jump to the phone lines. We have Doris waiting patiently. Hi, Doris. Uh, this is, um, I'm, I'm in Kentucky, and I need to know uh, why does it start in the west and go uh, east when the sun travels from east to west? Okay, I know Dr. Henderson can answer that one. I can, but that's such a good question. Um, and I don't think, I don't think everyone thinks of that question. Uh, was that Doris? Oh. Well, this little thing just doesn't want to stay on, but that's okay. Doris, I think, um, I think that's a great question. And so you're right. When you look at the sun, or at normal days, the sun moves from um, east to west. The moon normally moves from east to west, actually always does. So why doesn't the shadow do mm -hmm. that? So two things are happening. So one is that the Earth obviously is rotating, right? We rotate once every 24 hours. And so that rotation um, is in conflict with the, sh the moon's orbit around the Earth. So you imagine that because the Earth is moving, because the moon is moving around the Earth once every 29 days, it's really moving fast around us. And so that's the direction of, of the uh, shadow. If the Earth had not been rotating, the shadow would be even faster. It would be more like 2,500 miles per hour. But because the moon is going in the shadow, is going in the same direction that the Earth is rotating, it takes it down to immediately 1,500 miles per hour. Okay, Doris, I hope that answers your question. Thank you for calling in with such an, a question that's so smart. Okay, we have June on the line. Hi, June. Well, I was calling. I think last night y'all said that uh, something about the one that had computer to call NASA and uh, something, or something. Well, my granddaughter ordered these, and they come in today, and I got it there from Lawrence solar system 172 trade street lexington kentucky mm -hmm. and i was listening to what the man said and he was telling the numbers to look at them yes but i want to know if these glasses will be good enough to use well here is the the first step that you can take it's really probably tiny writing on the back of those glasses on the inside you want to look for the letters i s o and here's the number. Yes, ma'am. And here's the number to look for. One, two, three, one, two, dash, two. I'll say it again. One, two, three, one, two, dash, two. Okay. And if they don't have that on the back of the glasses, <laughs> well, then don't use them. Yes, ma'am. That's right. That's right. That's a good first step. Now, if you want a second step to verify, go to the website. That's right. If you go to the AAS website and you search for um, Eclipse Glasses Vendors, mm -hmm. then there'll be a list of those that you can count on. You were, uh, I don't the, have a computer. Okay. But you start with that first part and hopefully 
that'll get you the right ones. Well, my next comment won't help her then if she okay. doesn't have a computer. But I was going to add that in addition to the local vendors, mm -hmm. um, the, um, the first vendor on AAS that said this is a good place to get them is EclipseGlasses.com. Okay. And I know as of today, they were still taking orders and doing two-day shipments. Oh, wow. Okay. So, well, Eclipse Glasses. You may have to buddy up with someone who does have a computer or get your granddaughter back on, back on task there. Thank you for calling in very much. Uh, let's go to Morgan. Morgan, thanks for being with us. What's your question tonight? Um, yes, ma'am. I was just wondering, I've heard that there was a lot of people going to be coming in and visiting, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering how the roads were going to be, like 65? <laughs> That is a very good question. I can tell you, THP, our local police agencies are saying, be careful, plan ahead, get to where you want to be well ahead of when this starts and do not stop on the highway when it gets dark. Some people, like on 4th of July, we have fireworks and mm -hmm. they decide to pull over on the highway. Not safe, folks. Do safe. not do that with the Eclipse. THP is saying they will give you tickets if they see you do it. So first of all, be warned, tons of people are headed this way. That's right. It's since we've never had anything like this, it's hard to guess how many people are coming. Mm -hmm. But I do know that you know, interested astronomers, let's say, or amateur astronomers, if they live a little south of totality, they're going to drive north. Sure. And if they're a little north of totality, they're going to drive south. Mm -hmm. I, I happen to know that a number of schools are coming from Huntsville area in Alabama, from Florence, Alabama. And so I know of a few thousand people coming up. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be millions. Wow. So I, my advice is, Find where you want to be mm -hmm. and get there early and plan on it taking a while to get home. And when we say get there early, because some, you know we've said totality is going to last about a minute and a half probably yes. around this area, but this whole <laughs> event is longer than a minute and a half. So when we say get there early, you really got to get there early. Can you kind of give us a time frame? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so first contact uh, is when, if you have your proper eclipse glasses mm -hmm. and you're looking at the sun, you'll notice the tiniest little bite being taken out of it. So in Murfreesboro, that's 11.59 a.m. Mm. It'll be probably 11.58 a.m. For, for Nashville. Okay. So it, you could say it's starting at noon. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you want to be somewhere by 10 o'clock, that might 10 a.m., that might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, the show kind of starts at, at noon, and it takes an hour and a half for the disk of the moon to completely cover the disk of the sun. For us to be in darkness. That's right. So that darkness is an hour and a half later, around 1.30, 1.28, 1.29. And then it'll take another hour and a half after totality ends for the disk of the moon to leave. Okay. So you have an hour and a half before, starting at noon, and an hour and a half after. So it's about noon to three o'clock. Okay. So maybe get where you're going, pack a lunch, enjoy it, and then wait for the crowds to disperse a little bit. It's unless a good you want to be take one some of snacks. the exactly <laughs> why not? Why not? And a lot of different areas around here are planning eclipse viewing parties. I live in Mount Juliet. I know they mm -hmm. have a big one going on in mm -hmm. Charlie Daniels Park. Several of the cities around this area. So check your local city. See if you're in that path, first of all, or where you could go to be in the path. MTSU has a shindig plan. We really have something planned uh, that's going to be exciting. Um, we're going to start at about 11 o'clock. And we're going to have astronomers. We're going to have telescopes with the proper uh, filters on them. Mm -hmm. We're going to have live music. We're going to have uh, lots of speakers. And so it's going to be a fun place to be. And if you get to campus before the total solar eclipse begins, um, we have some glasses as well. So okay. it's first come, first serve basis, but we have glasses available to give out um, at MTSU's event on Monday. How many people are you expecting? I know lots of students. That's a, that's a tough guess. MTSU is not in session yet, mm. and so we don't know how many students will be, will be coming uh, of our own. We do know quite a few, a few thousand um, elementary age students will come. I think our ballpark estimate is about 15,000, but we may be way off. Wow, 15,000. That'll be fun. Yeah. I, I assume that you've never seen a total solar eclipse unless you've traveled to go see it. That's right. I have not. Okay. What do you think the response will be from people during the darkest hour, darkest minute? <laughs> well, I've seen some videos, okay. and I know one or two people that have been in that situation mm -hmm. where they have been able to experience a total solar eclipse. And about the only response you can be guaranteed is screaming. <laughs> Absolutely. So the, it's so abrupt. <laughs> So you're looking at your glasses, you're viewing safely, and the sun's almost covered, but then it goes from twilight to just dark, like that. And it's just overwhelming, it's emotional. Yeah. Um, everyone I've seen, there's just lots of screaming. Well, and I imagine even though we talk about and prepare people for what they're gonna see, it's still surprising in a way. It's not supposed to happen in the middle of the day to it's get dark. Just, it's just not supposed to. And, and when you're looking towards the sun at that minute, it's almost gonna look like a hole because mm -hmm. it'll be the darkest part of the sky. Everywhere else there could be stars, but there'll be that one hole and it's gonna 
it's just going to be something to, to, to see. And I was reading that, you know, it seems like everywhere you go, no matter if it's a concert or whatever, people are always whipping out their cell phone and taking pictures of everything. And <laughs> a, a article said, don't bother because A, you're going to miss it because it's the quickest minute you've ever lived of what happens. B, you may not have the right stuff on your camera yes. to take that. And it's not going to be the same as just being present for what's happening. Such a good point. Um, I would recommend for most people just try, just don't even try to mm -hmm. photograph it. One thing, we think of the moon sometimes um, as being large because, you know, obviously when it's a, a harvest moon, mm -hmm. we look at it and go, wow, it's large. Yeah. Um, but I, something you can do, and, and all our viewers, if you extend your arm mm -hmm. and look at your pinky, it will always be twice as big as the moon. Oh, yeah. And so it's a little tiny mm -hmm. sliver of the sky. And so it's very difficult to film. It's very difficult to get anything like a cell phone. It's just not going to be able to focus on it, and you're going to be wasting your time. Sure. You, you should be enjoying it, and you shouldn't be trying to photograph it. If you happen to photograph a little too early, before totality, you may tear your camera up. Oh, wow. Because they're not made to be focusing to on the sun. Very interesting. Let's hop back to the phone lines. We have Jennifer on the line. Hi, Jennifer. Hi there. Uh, I guess this is something to add to what y'all were just saying about photographing mm -hmm. it. I've been reading online about how in the 1800s, photographers actually took images of a solar, solar eclipse and they um, were referring to something called a corona. And so I'm wondering what a corona is and how could they actually get a photographic image <coughs> of something like that back then? Jennifer, thank you for asking this question. You were leading us right into where we were going next. How did you know? It's almost as if we sent questions out. I know, out. Jennifer, call in with this exactly. question. This is perfect. It's so time, let's, Jennifer. Let's just jump into this. We may have to take a commercial break in the middle of it, but okay. Courtney, if we want to get the next animations ready. Okay, yes. During these next phase, or during the phases of this eclipse, we're going to be able to see some pretty cool things. That's right. So it, it happens pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just <clears throat> a minute or two before totality to a minute or two after, there's some interesting effects. Okay. And um, that's, that's what I have a, a couple of photos that we could look yeah. at. Yeah. So what's this? So for instance, um, because the moon is not perfectly round, mm -hmm. it has mountains, it has valleys, the light uh, of the sun that's coming around it doesn't stop all at once. So these, what you see here are called Bailey's beads. Hmm. And it's just where um, certain regions of the of the moon are letting a little bit of sunlight through where the rest of it's dark. So these are Bailey's beads and it's just due to um, irregularities on the surface of the moon. Okay, totally makes sense. <clears throat> yep. I want to say, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <If> we, <laughs> I've always we, wanted to say that, but right. you know what? Okay, here's the next one. We go to the next yeah. one and this is always seen. And this is called the diamond ring. And this I is can the, see why. It's the very last moment, uh, the very last location of any sunlight. Looks a lot like a diamond ring. It sure does. And when you see the diamond ring, you know you're just about there. Within okay. seconds, we will have totality. And now the next photo will go directly ah. to the caller's question. So this is what you can see during totality. Wow. This white, um, sort of almost misty uh, um, lines of light, this mm -hmm. is what's called the corona. And it's always there. It's just that even though it's visible during totality, it's so uh, so dim compared to the rest of the sun, we just can't see it. It's just like we have bright stars behind the sun. Sure. In the daytime, we just don't see them. That corona is always there. And it was, in fact, uh, discovered during a total solar eclipse. So these are rays of light, or is <laughs> it the energy that we're seeing, like the energy field? What is this? Th this is actually, you could call it a rarefied gas. Okay. So the sun is made primarily out of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you an interesting thing about the corona, it's super hot. <laughs> so while the surface of the, of the sun itself is about 5,800 Kelvin, which that's pretty hot. I would say that's super hot. Yeah, it's super hot. But the corona is even hotter, as really? much as a million Kelvin. So it's not as bright because it's so, it's so um, low density. There's just not many atoms mm. of hydrogen mm -hmm. in that gas, but it's so hot that it's, um, it, has a, a, it gives off a lot of light. That is so interesting, and I can see why astronomers are just, just in awe of this. In this picture, you, this is something you'll see without your glasses. This is during totality. So, and I want to talk about it when we get back. When you need to have the glasses on, and when you can actually take them off during mm -hmm. this, because I don't think a lot of people know that. That's a good point. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. I know we have Dolly on the line. Dolly, don't go anywhere. If you have a quick question, this is the time to call, 615-737-PLUS. Stay with us. We're coming right back.